Our dearest viewers, we send our condolences to each and every one of you as we mourn the days in the lead up to the death anniversary, the murder anniversary of our dear master, the son of our first Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and indeed his dear children and his family in the land, in the holy land of Karbala and we, stick, we extend our condolences to our dear awaited saviour and may Allah hasten his reappearance. Throughout these days we are bringing you the opportunity to learn from the Masaib of Karbala, not just to take part in the Masaib but to actually learn from it. So in these nights where you're attending the Majalis, wherever you are in the world, you are connecting just that little bit more rather than just on a very surface level type basis and for these first five nights we've decided to dedicate them towards the women and children of Aba Abdullah who are involved for usually we remember them for the Masa'ib that came after for them no doubt that is an, uh, no lesser of a Masa'ib compared to this but it's something that we wanted to look at how they were during these days and to ensure that we do not neglect them so inshallah with my dear brother Ali Fal with me tonight we're going to remember the princess and the queen, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi yeah, salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, my dear viewers as well. Um, yeah, uh, Sayyidah Zainab, there's, there's a lot that can be said mm. about the tragedy of Sayyidah Zainab, about what you can learn from Sayyidah Zainab, the lessons, the patience, the fact that, you know, we mentioned in previous, uh, previous um, episodes about Sayyidah Ruqayya mm -hmm. and how she assumed leadership. Sayyidah Zainab, she, she had that leadership right from the beginning it's not something that had to it's not something that fell into her hands she took it upon her to, to to be a leader um in those difficult times knowing that she was leading herself with imam hussein knowing that she had to sacrifice everything that she had knowing that she will see all of the calamities but this is the patience that she had and the submission that you also mentioned mm. in previous episodes mm. the total submission to allah's will um, and the total submission to the fact that Imam Hussein salam, had a message to spread and she was 100% behind that message to sacrifice everything that she had uh, and to see the sacrifice in front of her and for and furthermore to call everything beautiful right at the end mm -hmm. is, is, is testament to a character of, of Sayyidah Zainab Ahsan, so no doubt that leadership came from her father Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. Uh, you know, we, we talk about role models and we use her as a role model and she didn't have to look very far for her own role, role model and that, that was the purity of that family. One thing that we wanted to, as, as Ali just mentioned, that we wanted to look at was how did, or one of the ways perhaps in which Sayyidah Zainab managed to deal with the calamities that fell upon her. And one of the titles that's given to her is Umm al-Masaib, a very famous title, the, the mother of tragedies, the mother of Masaib. And this title that is given isn't just given as a result of what happened in Karbala it's what happened previously as well it's the amalgamation of all these different episodes she had to witness recover from and go again and this was the murder and demise of her father Ali ibn Abi Talib the murder and demise of her mother Fatima al-Zahra the murder and demise of her brother Imam al Hasan. And note, I'm always using this word murder, and it's a tragic murder each and every time. It's something that we dedicate two, three nights to in Shah Ramadan, for Fatimiyah, three different narrations for five nights, whatever it may be. For Imam al Hassan, yeah. we have the night and the day for Imam al Hassan, and then of course Ashura. And she had to witness every single one of these, and hence being known as Umm al Masaib is no surprise when you understand this kind of background. So, what we wanted to very briefly try and do is to understand perhaps one of the ways in which she managed to deal with this constant witnessing of death and murder yet managed to recover and recover and recover and one of the notions that we're taught is this and this is that in quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah mulk says qadir." but it's the second line where he says the verse is Al-Mawt and then al haya It's death and then life. So Allah says, who created death and life rather than 
life and death. When we talk about life and death, we say life and death. We don't say death and life. Yeah. And there's a wisdom behind this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that whilst we as humans perceive we are born and hence life, and then we die, hence death, the actual transmission from stage one to stage four is we are dead. He breathes a soul into us, we're living. Then we're dead again, the dead of the dunya. And then we're rebirthed, we're born again into akhirah. Mm. It's death, life, death, life. Hence Allah says, Al-Mawt wal haya And this in itself needs to teach us a very significant lesson in that this death that we know it is should not be seen as the end of a journey, should not be seen as, okay, oh no, Sadiq has passed away, that's the end of his life, he'll never have the opportunity to do X, Y, Z, he'll never see his mother again, da, da, da. Rather it should be seen that, ah, this individual has died, yes, but is now on his journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a very famous poet, Shaheed, Shaheed murdered in Pakistan, Sibt Ja'far, a very famous Pakistani poet who wrote in the language of Urdu. And he has a verse where he beautifully says that when I die, uh, paraphrasing, when I die, don't see this as my death. See mm. this when you're dressing me in my coffin and you're uh, washing me, that you're preparing me for my visit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahl al-Bayt. Mm. And perhaps this is how Sayyidina Zainab alayhi salam was taught on how to see death, to see it as the start of the new life. But we should still not forget again, and we always reiterate, they were humans. And this feeling that she had to view the death of her mother, her father, her brother, her brother, another brother, and another brother, her sons, her nephews, and then her niece in the dungeon, Umm al Masaib. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we're not sure. Even like we were mentioning Umm al Banin uh, a couple of nights ago as well. And it's actually quite interesting because she says, Oh, Bishr, you have. Um, you have torn torn my heart into pieces. Mm. Um, but what she specifically says, قلبي, or I'm not sure if I got the Arabic right, but basically he's, he, he, you've, you've broken the tendons mm. or the, 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 the almost the, the, the think, arteries and veins. The arteries yeah. and the veins within, within my heart. And scientifically, I think recently there's been a, there's been a publication where, where someone can actually rip Heart tendons, heart muscles within the heart through grief. Allahu Akbar. So, you know, you mention Umm al Banin and how she says, No, you've broken my heart. But what did, what kind of heart did Umm al Musayyab have, Sayyidah Zainab, mm -hmm. for her to be able to see from what you were saying exactly? Well, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Fatima Zahra, Imam Hussain, Imam Hussain, Abdul Abbas, and all the companions that she holds dear as well. Mm -hmm. The poem, um, written by herself as well, Sadiq says my heart has broken into pieces where does each piece reside will i ever get a peaceful moment before my soul flies my heart is broken into pieces where does each piece reside? Will I ever get a peaceful moment Before my soul flies Before my soul flies One segment lives in my hometown Drowning in sorrow and grief it recalls the heat from the door and the loss of an unborn. It feels the collapse of the door on the purest dear lady. It resides in that secret grave with the blessed broken rib. But that peace feels peace as my mother says. I'm with you, O oh Zainab. I'm with you, O oh Zainab. Will I ever, will I ever get a peaceful moment before my soul flies? Before my soul flies. 
One segment lives in the city Where a king lays with prophets It recalls the strike on a prostrate head And days of poisoning it feels the hunger of orphans who lost their own father too It resides in a grave with a man who wished he could protect his son But that peace feels peace as my father says But that peace feels peace as my father says I'm with you, oh my Zainab I'm with you, oh Zainab One segment lives in the coffin Covered with arrows and holes It recalls the regurgitation Of a poison liver it feels the funeral procession going and then return It resides in a grave domeless where tears cannot be shed But that peace feels peace as my brother says I'm with you, oh Zainab, but that peace feels peace as my brother says I'm with you, oh Zainab One segment lives in the two beds which housed my own two sons It recalls the scent and the first words of two young innocents it feels the embrace of the small hands Which were cut into shreds It resides in a house which no longer is full of laughter and joy But that peace feels peace when my two sons say We're with you, oh mother, we're with you, oh mother one segment lives near the river which saw the moon fall on earth It recalls the flying flag until the water was no more It feels a heart shattered due to the cries of the children it resides in the hands which are no longer protecting avails But that peace feels peace when my brother says I'm with you, oh Zainab I'm with you, oh Zainab One segment lives next to the chest on the hot blood stained sands it recalls the kiss upon the neck which I cannot describe It feels the call of Helmin which echoed across the lands It resides in heaven and the earth with twenty million around But that peace feels peace when my brother says I'm with you, oh Zainab I'm with you, oh Zainab One segment lives in the dungeon Where a girl cried no more It recalls the sleep that never stopped upon seeing that head It feels the thirst of a young girl who gave to her brother it feels the thirst of a young girl Who gave to her brother first It resides nearby in that lonely It resides nearby in that lonely shrine Where nobody visits But that peace feels peace when my dear niece says I'm with you, oh auntie I'm with you, oh auntie Even after my death there's still no peace Whilst wars wage around I reside here alone with no more 
guests, no visitors. But if they're going to my brother Hussein, then simply let that be. As for him, I was just a supporter protecting the imami. But the writer says, peace upon Zainab, you were a vital peace. You were a vital peace. My heart has been broken into pieces. Where does each piece reside? Will I, will I ever get a peaceful moment before my soul flies? Before my soul flies. So many thanks to Saad al Damani actually for writing that very relevant poem to what we were actually talking about. And this notion of Sayyidah Zainab's heart being shattered into different pieces across the world and left there to reside resonates to just how the majalis of Aba Abdullah has scattered across the whole world. We said in the first night, posters coming up of majalis in South Africa, in Australia, in ev almost every single country now, it's like, oh wow, you know, th there's another majlis there. And one thing we must send our appreciation to Zainab Zayn for is for initiating, being amongst the initiators of the majlis of Imam al Hussein, for being amongst the initiators of the poetry, the lamentation, the aza, and the remembrance of him for sure. But I guess one point to take is to understand this, this, this concept of establishing a majlis and what it actually resembles. I think on the surface we see it as, okay, we hold the imma very dear to us and we'll hold a majlis in their remembrance, but is there a bit more to it? And to take it very simply, if we take someone in our own family that's passed away, when you gather for what people may call the Fatiha Khani or the, the time where the relatives and the friends will gather and they'll recite Fatiha, they'll recite Quran, usually they will also speak about that person. They'll say he was a great man, he used to do X, Y, Z. He was, you know, he was one person in the community that would give and sponsor you know, children's programs without hesitation because he really saw the value of bringing up the next community. And you revive his message, you revive what he stood for as a man. And the same notion is with Majlis, but it goes a step further. For with the Majlis of Aba Abdullah, we are reviving this message of Aba Abdullah. We take the time, money and effort, the sleepless nights, the quick journeys back from home to come to the centres and to really ensure that we hold a moment in our life, in our week, in our day for an hour or two to revive his message. And when we remember what his message was, what, what, when we remember what his message was as a divine leader, as an imam chosen by Allah, we remember that we are simply reviving the message of Allah, the deen of Allah. Mm. And I feel it's very important not to separate the two. It shouldn't be that a majlis is in remembrance of Aba Abdullah. And on the other side, we go to madrasa to learn about religion. No, these are for certain overlapped. They go hand in hand. There is no point in remembering and crying for Imam al Hussein if you don't take one ounce of knowledge about the religion from it. Because his opponents were exactly that people who followed the religion of Islam but took nothing away from it. Mm. So, what I'm trying to say is this when you hold a majlis in remembrance of Aba Abdullah, know that you are actually reviving his message. And by reviving his message, you are reviving the true message and the true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where the correlation in Quran then comes in where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ذَلِكَ وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And whoever holds in honor of the sha'air, the symbols of Allah, verily, for surely they reflect the piety of the heart. So by holding the sha'air, the rituals, the remembrance of Aba Abdullah, you're not just doing it for him. That's level one and by no means enough. You're doing it and you're proclaiming that you are reviving the message and the deen of Allah. So for tonight or tomorrow when your next measure that you attend is, when your hand reaches your chest, yes, try and feel an element of pain that perhaps the companions and Imam Hussein went through, but try and resemble that 
moment that hand hits your chest, that that is another beat for you to say, you know what? Thank you, Imam, for reviving and keeping this message alive for me, this deen of Allah alive for me, because this sharia that Allah has dictated is one that will help me become an incredible human being, one that's remembered within humanity for serving you, Allah. And let that be a conviction each time that it touches your chest. This is the majlis of Aba Abdullah. This is really the essence of it. And it stems from Sayyidah Zainab. It stems from that lady who, in that night of Shah Maghrib, would run between tent to tent. As you said, accumulated that leadership that Imam al Hussein and Abu Fadl really held before they passed. And she was the support. But she then became the focal point. People would come to her and ask, what do we do in this situation? She gathered the children. Once the fire of the tent started, she was ensuring everyone was okay, taking the numbers of the children with Imam al-Sajjad. This was the efforts and the leadership of Sayyidah Zainab that even while seeing the burning tents, and we spoke about the tragedies that she saw before, no doubt when you remember one tragedy, if it links to another, it causes that connection. And the burning of a house, her house at that point of a tent, with the correlation of a burning of a house of her mother, mm. I have no idea how that didn't cause her to break down at that moment and, you know, stop her from carrying on. Yeah. That is, um, just at mentioning the tents and mentioning the fire uh, and Shama Gariban, I'm sure that every single person here feels the same after the, the, the Ashura and the the electrifying atmosphere and, and the recitation of the maqtal um, and then it's reaching the pinnacle of the actual moment where Imam Hussain was martyred and, and, and beheaded and then you get that s and then of course straight after that is, is, the, is the heat and the mm. moment of the burning of the tents and the, the running from, from tent to tent and the children and then you have the Shama Gariban where everything is just solemn and that you have this really heavy heavy feeling in your heart knowing that this this night is the first night of of absolute calamities for Sayyidina Zainab. So a last piece before we bring this uh, this episode inshallah to a close. Standing in the burning tents I watch as the ashes fall they turn into memories and then towards me they crawl. Standing in the burning tents, I watch as the ashes fall. They turn into memories and then towards me they crawl. They show me things that hurt sight, things I don't want to recall. A sword striking a father. A rib crushed against the wall The fire draws me pictures I cry with smoke in my lungs Grandfather O oh Muhammad By the sword of Saqifa Your grandson's blood has been shed Just like Hunayn and Uhud your funeral they all fled, but there's no funeral here. Hussein's chest is crushed instead. I watch the fire and smoke sweep Hussein's tents off the sands. The only hands to help me are Abbas's severed. Hands by fire, my veil burns, and my mother understands. Holding a rib that's broken beside me, Fatima stands. For whom do Layla's tears flow? That can't be Ali Al Akbar. That fallen body looks like Muhammad, my grandfather. Uh, Layla, I know you're confused. When I saw his head shatter and it was struck my eyes, so the head of Ali Haidar. A fire. 
A fire surrounds you for a while But you look at a candle A flame extinguished early So young and so beautiful When I saw When I saw your Qasim struck I saw his father smile when his body they would drag Qasim Hassan would cuddle I witness Um Kulthum Come closer towards my side When we witness our brother a sight that makes the sun hide is that really his body? What's outside and what's inside? How much it hurts these sisters to see his massacred pride. The fire draws me pictures. The fire draws me pictures. Many thanks to the poets, Nuri Sardar. And I believe that we bring to an end this episode remembering Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam And we leave you with one hadith insha'Allah from our holy 8th Imam the king of Mashhad and one of the great grandsons of Imam al Hussein, where he says Truly the day of Hussein alayhi salam wounded our eyelids shed our tears humiliated our revered one in the land of Karb meaning anguish and bala affliction and you, O land of Karbala, have left us with anguish and affliction until the last day of his life. So for the likes of Hussein's weepers, they should weep. For crying and weeping destroys the great sins. And with that, we leave you for this night as we get closer to the day of Ashura. Ensure that when you enter the majlis, you remember what it is for, what it symbolizes. Ensure that you hold a level, of, a level of somber during the majlis. So those tears can be meaningful, and as Imam al salam says, so that they can help in extinguishing the great sins. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.